yourself stuck on a stitch concept and you go and run over to, well, I don't know if you run, but I really don't, but can you tell, full figured. Um, you run over to YouTube and you bang it in there how you do the next step and then you go and do it and I say, oh my God, I just ruined my project only to realize that the advice that you had banged into YouTube actually doesn't make sense for what you're doing. I'm about to show you something that I didn't realize because I banged into YouTube on how to do something years ago and I completely ruined my Tunisian project. So today I'm going to take you over to the desk. And I'm going to pull out my big Tunisian hook and I'm going to show you a little tip on how to fasten off or cast off or bind off whatever words that you want to use today. And I'm going to show you a little simple little trick because I ruined the end of my Tunisian project one time because I banged it into YouTube wrong. So without further ado, let's go on over to the studio desk and let's get busy. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern, please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So let's look at my little dishcloth that I've been making. It's a mix of two different stitches. We have the Tunisian knit stitch and then we have the Tunisian pearl stitch and together it gives a rib stitching and on the back it looks like this. So what's gonna happen here is you look up online, you bang it into YouTube and say, well, how do you cast off, fasten off, or bind off? It's considered bind off or cast off technically. Fastening off is something that is in a crochet term, but this is more knitting. So you look it up and you say, oh, okay, I just gotta grab these verticals and I just gotta go in and then I just yarn over and then I pull through and through and I work my way all the way across. And what you're going to notice immediately once you start doing this is like, gee, that doesn't look what it's been doing before. And then I'm gonna do this one. And what I'm doing is that I'm breaking the pattern apart by doing that. See how at the end it does not look the same as your work? So therefore it will be very noticeable for you. So when you have different stitches like this, you have to change the bind off to match the stitch that you've been working with. So if you've been doing, in my case, Tunisian uh, pearl stitch here, Tunisian knit stitch, I have to bind off in the same stitching pattern. So let's begin to examine that. When you bind off, you want to match the stitch. So what we have to do is that we have to take this particular row here and finish it by the time we get to the other side. You'll notice that there's holes in your work and when you do the bind off, it's going to be the bind off row that finishes it to make that more solid. So if I was doing the Tunisian knit stitch or the Tunisian pearl stitch which I just did here, I have to do it in the same manner. So I have to do the pearl stitch in order to do the bind off. So I'm just gonna do it as a, as a Tunisian pearl stitch but usually I would leave it on to the um, hook and then I continue on but I want to pull it through the original loop like that to finish it and therefore it'll finish that properly. So the next one is a Tunisian pearl stitch as well. So I pull through and I continue to pull through and I'm eliminating out these stitches by doing so. This is a Tunisian knit stitch. So I've been going through the center. So I'm gonna pull through and when I pull through, I'm going to continue to pull through the original loop to finish that. Do you see what I'm saying? If you change the stitch, the way that it's uh, casting off or binding off to something that's generic as a Tunisian thing, you're gonna ruin your project right at the end which I've done. So this again is a purl stitch. And this is also a purse stitch and I just know that because I've been working with the pattern overnight. So I've been doing this and you can see that the way that you finished it off that it takes the stitching right to the very end because you started it right at the very beginning. So why would you wanna change it at the end like that? So you wanna make sure that whatever you decide to do that the, the way that you're binding off or casting off is in the same stitch format so that it will take it right to the very edge and that's my lesson today. So I'm finishing my edge right to the very end and what you're going to need to do is to use your tapestry needle in order to secure in any of the loose ends that you do have and you wanna do that in a nice way and you wanna favor the back side of whatever your project is. In this case it's a dishcloth. So I go right into the end like I normally would and just pull through and through and then that's the end of the journey. So I like to just trim this so uh, long enough so I can get a tapestry needle into it and to have it lock, I just yarn over it and I pull through and it locks it 
like this and I wanna turn it to the back side. So what I'm going to do is with a tapestry needle is that you wanna drag it through the stitch work. Now when you drag it through the best option to do is to drag it through the plies itself. If you go between the strands it will naturally fall out but if you can literally just take your needle and just patiently just split a ply apart like that and just keep on the back side so I don't want you to ever see this needle going through the front side of the work. Just stay within the plies. So if you turn it around you should never see that needle. So you wanna go through and when you pull on it don't change the shape of it. Just pull on it tight and then go through a slightly different path and again the more plies that you can break apart and even if you break apart the ply that has gone over there that's even better. Right and then you can just go back and forth. So you wanna go back and forth a minimum of three times and then you wanna do that with any loose ends you have including that very starting one that you, you did. So this would be how you would complete a bind off in the way of maintaining the stitch work just like you see. So it looks pretty awesome just like that.